<laughs> well done, John. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Throwdown himself <laughs> on Dromeo. John Wooten, thank you so much for coming out. Man, thanks for having me here. This is great. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. I have been a fan of yours, and I've learned all my rudiments through you and your videos on Vic Firth and your books and all that. So um, it's an honor for me to sit beside you while you teach a lesson here. Well, it's an honor to be here. I'm so impressed with this place and you guys. Thank and, you. Uh, so very much looking forward to it. Absolutely. So. And for everyone watching, welcome. We have a PDF you can download. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see all the information in the description there. Um, but if you guys don't know who John Wooten is, he is, first and foremost, you're a musician. Um, exactly. Very, very good musician at that. And uh, he's a percussion professor at the University of Southern Mississippi. Uh, you're a rudiment master through all your videos on Vic Firth. Um, also his books, which we'll talk about in a sec. Um, you play a lot of steel pan and you're also a vocalist. That's too, right. Which I didn't know, which is really cool. Um, you're also the author of two books, the uh, Rudiment, or Drummer's Rudimental Reference Book and Dr. Throwdown's Rudimental Remedies. Um, both incredible books. If you guys haven't seen them, check them out. Um, we also would like you to go and find John Wooten online. Make sure you follow him on social. He is on Facebook at wo <laughs> Rudimental uh, Drumming.com, right? That's it. That's W O O T I M E N T A L. Woody Mental. WoodyMentalDrumming.com. Sure. You can also find him on Facebook at Woody Mental Drumming and also at Instagram at John A. Wooten. So make sure you follow him and give him a like on there. He's an incredible drummer and uh, definitely check out his books. And you have some stuff on your website as well, some instructional videos and stuff too. That's correct. Very yeah. cool. Huge thanks to uh, the sponsors for helping take, make this lesson happen. Pearl, Remo, uh, Sabian, Vic Firth, and also Roloff as well. Um, great helpers for all this kind of stuff. So thank you so much. And um, this lesson is very cool. This is called Play Music, Not Rudiments. And um, something that, that, that's very much a passion for you. Do, do you want to explain what that means? Well, as we talked about, this could be a controversial title. Uh, yeah. Might tick some people off, you know, but um, bring it on, right? Yeah, bring it on, exactly. <laughs> and as you said, and as I told you, I'm a musician first. I just happen to know a few things about the rudiments. And uh, for me, it's very, very important that my rudimental drumming is applicable and practical for other styles, other, other instruments, specifically drum set. But I mean, everything I do, I play Latin percussion, so I play congas. Uh, Timbales. I play a lot of steel pants. Not that I play rudiments on steel pants, but the, the dexterity and, and technique that we use can be um, useful for just about any percussion instrument. Hmm. So that's what's most important. Um, you know, we talk about applying rudiments to the drum set, but it's more, I think the term apl uh, applying the technique to the drum set is more important than actually applying the rudiments. Sometimes playing a certain rudiment might be put in a square Mm. Uh, peg into a round hole. But the technique itself can be extremely useful. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've been talking back and forth and going through the content and I'm really excited about this lesson. There's examples that we're going to go through, some musical examples too. You have some some uh, songs and stuff you're going to play around with. Uh, so it's going to be a really cool lesson. Make sure you, you stick around. And um, we're also going to be filming an exclusive course for Edge members from John on Drum Corps and starting out uh, your first steps to getting into drum corps, which is something great we don't have on drum yo yet, so I'm really happy for that too. Uh, so you started this lesson playing Crazy Army, one of the uh, solo snare solos that uh, made popular, I guess, by Steve Gadd. Um, explain why you started with that. Well, it's written by Ed Limley. It's a, what we call an ancient snare drum solo. You can hear, you know, like groups like the old guard, drum and five core play it. And, uh, it's been played a lot by different drummers, but Steve Gadd definitely made it very famous. And um, it's a rudimental snare drum solo. And the whole thing about making, playing music, not rudiments, is really it's, we should, we could say, play your rudiments musically, or, or have, use them to make, to make music, mm -hmm. and apply them. And within um, Crazy Army, there's a lot of lessons in there mm -hmm. uh, on the strokes. And we're going to talk about the real rudiments in a minute. So rudiment meaning the most fundamental element of whatever you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's not the rudiment. Some of these rudiments are very complex. Like we're talking about inverted flam taps, right? Yeah. It's pretty Heck complex. Yeah. <laughs> but the strokes we use to play these rudiments are the real rudiments. Mm -hmm. And to me, there's only four of the strokes. 
So can we talk about yeah. those real quick? Let's do it, yeah. You know, you have rebound strokes, so, and, and each stroke is defined by what follows them. So a rebound stroke, say an accent preparing for another accent. Simply that. It's like in double paradiddles. We have a rebound stroke. The first accent's a rebound stroke. Then we have control strokes. Control stroke is an accent preparing for a ghost note, right? My earpiece is falling out here, so. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so we want to start high and end low. And that's very important. We can talk about a lot of great drummers who have really great sounding ghost notes. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anybody? You've oh. had recently in here. I know many drummers that have had incredible ghost notes. Yeah, and I dynamics. I think of a few you've had in here. David Garibaldi is one of them. He's he's Un unbelievable he's, with his control. One yeah. of the best. Yeah. Oh, Jason Sutter, you just had in here. Uh, Amazing, right. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Vinny Caliuta, yeah. man, all these. And when you think when you think of the the clarity they have between accents and their ghost notes, mm -hmm. it's because of this stroke. It's the control stroke. They can they can stop that stick on a dime like an inch above the head, and then they're ready to go. And it's not this, and they're trying to play ghost notes from here, mm -hmm. okay? We learn this when we're working with our rudiments, Absolutely. which we're gonna do in a minute. We have taps, or ghost notes. They're just soft notes followed by more soft notes. And then we have the upstroke, which is a tap getting ready for an accent. Okay, um, also we know is the molar stroke. We're not gonna open that can of worms right now, but. Yeah. I call it common sense, not, they, everybody says, is that the molar stroke? I said, I call it the common, common sense. sense stroke, you know? <laughs> it's, it's all about being efficient. Yes. Okay, it's efficiency. So if we remember that word, efficiency, application, practicality, those are good things to, to remember. Okay. Okay, so we have those strokes. Now, if we take these and we apply it in, like in um, Crazy Army with the flamicue. We're gonna talk about that real quick. It's the only American rudiment, by the way. All the other rudiments have, have come from either, mostly Swiss or European origin. Yeah. But the flamicue, and I'm very proud that this is the only American rudiment because it's the only, it's the only rudiment where the accent's not on the downbeat. Ah. It's the funkiest rudiment. No doubt, yeah, right? you're right, yeah. So, you know, we get the funkiest rudiment. Nice. <laughs> so, so we have a soft flam, and then an accent, right? So that grace note is an upstroke, or molar stroke, if we will, and an accent. And by working on these flamicues, we're gonna, we can apply this to drum set in this next exercise we're going to do. But by learning these, these solos and learning these rudiments, you're gonna have um, just a, a diverse range of dynamics, which is what we need on the drum set. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're playing just one drum, mm -hmm. you got one pitch, how are you gonna make it sound interesting? Mm -hmm. Or dynamics, and work on extremes of dynamics. Very soft, very loud, mm -hmm. and then uh, different rhythms as well. But Okay, so with, the, with those, those um, rudiments that we have in there, we're working on these strokes, flam paradiddles in there. See a nice smooth upstroke, and and if we can get this, and we get this to flow on the drum set, yeah, yeah, we got something going on. Okay. So so yeah, all these drummers we talked about, check them out. You go, Phew. yeah. How do they do that? That's how. It all starts with the rudiments. It all starts right there. Yeah, and they're able to play music because they've done the the, the That's work right. in developing that. Right. Very cool. So. While you're practicing, you always want to keep this in mind: is is what's your goal? So when you practice the rudiments, the rudiments is, um, it's, it's not an end, it's a means to an end, mm -hmm. okay? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's tools, they're tools you're gonna use and the technique tools you're gonna use to make your music. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's go on, we're gonna talk about paradiddles. Sure, so, yeah. Paradiddles. Yeah, we'll start at number two, here it is. Number yeah. two, it's up there. I didn't write any accents in, I just put the rhythm and uh, you know, I was just thinking, we were talking about David Garibaldi. This is in his book, Future Sounds. Okay. So I didn't mean to steal it, David. Sorry, sorry, David. But it's, it's in my book, too. <laughs> Throw down. <laughs> so it's just paradiddles, and we just changed the sticking. Okay, so this is a paradiddle. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. With an accent on the first note, right? All right, we don't stop there. 
Don't stop right there. Yeah. Everybody thinks, okay, that's a parrot. What am I going to do with it? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Holy cow. We can do all kinds of things with it. Let's change the sticking. So, well, it's not a paradiddle anymore. Well, not really. It's a morphed paradiddle, I guess. We can play it on different surfaces. We can play it. So if you would, you could practice this sticking just like it is but our, and then play it on different surfaces. Let's do this. We're going to play this exercise with the accent on every downbeat. Okay. And just we'll play the bass drum with the accent on every downbeat as well. Okay. And then we'll put the right hand on the hi-hat, left hand on the snare drum. Okay. Sounds good to me. This is the four-bar exercise here. And, and then here's one thing that's very important with learning your rudiments. The different stickings create different articulations. Mm -hmm. So listen to how the articulation changes from measure to measure when you're playing this. So you have to choose which articulation you want to use in a certain groove, because not every articulation is going to fit every groove. Right? Yeah. So this is where the rudiments really are important, is learning articulations and how to use them. Okay, so these are all, if you look at the rhythm, the rhythm's the same all the way across the page. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put, say, imagine there's accents on every downbeat. That's the same. The sticking changes. Okay, but the rhythm is exactly the same. These are not going to sound the same. Okay. At all. Yeah. Even if I play it on one drum, it's not going to sound the same. Okay. But I'm going to play it on a hi-hat and the, and the uh, snare drum. So let's, let's just do that. We'll just play those four bars. One, two, ready. Each bar is different. Each bar is different. Yeah. But those are all paradiddles, just morphed a little bit. We're changing the accent, right? Mm -hmm. um, we can play it. Now, I have in, in my book, Drum, uh, Rudimental Remedies, lesson five is all paradiddles. And uh, each, each lesson in there has a different style of music. So you can practice your rudiments in, with different styles of music from around the world. I think this one's... This lesson five is all Brazilian music, so samba okay, yeah. and stuff. So we're going to play a track, and we're going to do that. I'm just going to play one measure at a time for a while, uh, and, then, and then change it up. Uh, Sounds good. We'll get the track one. ready to go, and this is a great way to see how these four different variations of the paradiddle can meet. Very, very, yeah. very simple. And if you have sticks, everybody has sticks, you can just practice. You can practice this on a, on a drum. You can practice it on a pad. You can practice it on your drum set. Play along with us. So we're just going to play this track for a while using those four patterns. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I think we got it queued up. One, two, ready, and. That just happened to work out great. Say, did today. you plan that? That was great. I did, I did not, actually. <laughs> nice. So, wonderful. Very cool, though. But you see, that's just paradiddles, and you can see how the articulation can change. Yeah. Now, what I do want to stress is that you have one of these, one of these bad boys, and you practice these, these things, like, by themselves mm -hmm. on the pad, and you can focus on the technique. And, uh, I mean, if I, if I were teaching a private lesson, I'd, and really, it wouldn't matter what level the person is playing at um, or how long they've been playing, because we all, even, even older guys develop bad habits, yeah. you know? Yeah. Even myself, and I have to go back and work them out. So sometimes, uh, I was telling you my motto for the Dr. Throwdown motto is 
break it down, slow it down, so you can throw it down. Love that. All right? Yeah. So we, we can break down the strokes, talk, talking about the control strokes and upstrokes, and just playing paradiddles, slow, right, on a pad. In the next measure, the third measure, and the fourth measure. Okay, yeah. on a pad first, and then and then you can add the feet, and then you can add different ostinatos to the feet, and then you could put them on cymbals, you know, um, with the rudiments. So what I'm trying to get at, and hopefully you're getting the message, is that the rudiments aren't limiting. What's limiting is your imagination mm -hmm. and how to use them. The rudiments are a tool, mm -hmm. okay, just like a hammer or a screwdriver. Yeah. Now, what kind of house you build with those tools, it's up to you. Yeah. You can build a shack, or you can build a mansion. There you yeah. go. So, I don't know, is that a cheesy analogy? Hey, it's, it's a great good. analogy. <laughs> cheesy or not, I love it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> great, all right. All right, man. So, um, let's move on. Yes, let's move on. We'll move on to some rolls. How about, you know, six stroke rolls. We, uh, we were talking about different interpretations of rolls and different interpretations of the rudiments. Of course, the six stroke roll, we have that, okay, we have it up. Uh, if you look at the first measure there, it's just a skeleton of the six stroke roll and then the six stroke roll itself, and it's six notes. So it's an accent, two diddles, and then an accent, which comes out to six, all right? Basic math. Basic math. All right, so let's just play that. Let's play, let's play the first measure over and over. You got sticks? Y'all got sticks out there? Got a pad, a snare drum? One, two, first measure, go. One very important thing about that book and when I teach and the rudiments is to be ambidextrous. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do every other measure starting on the left hand. Okay. Let's do that. So again, right hand, and then we do it once off the right and then off the left. Two, ready. Okay, now you can apply this drum set in so many ways. I mean, this, like, once again, it's only limited to your imagination. Obviously, we got two toms, we got two accents, right? Got two cymbals. Okay, and you can. Use that wow. there. That measure might not be a great way to use it, but you can come up with your own stuff. Let's take the se take the second measure. Uh, oh, I've got it right here, so I can just it's, and it plays the six stroke roll plus one note. Okay. So we play the end of it. Do the same thing. I started off the right, then the left. One, two, ready. there on the toms there for a minute. I accidentally did something else, but it sounded pretty cool. Call it jazz. So call it jazz. There you go. Okay. Um, we could put the right hand on the hi-hat. Okay. Very but cool. put the bass drum with the right hand. Yeah. Then we got something that sounds pretty funky. No doubt. Like a bow-legged monkey. <laughs> All right, so as we, as we go on, this next pattern, uh, the next measure uh, just makes it a little different. So we have them back to back with just an eighth note in between. So two, one, two, ready, and. Do that again. So play the first one off the right, second one off the left, then off the right. Uh, we can do that.
jazz. We're <laughs> improvising on which <laughs> drums we play. So it's a nice little accident there. Yeah, it sounded great. And then the, the next one is just consecutive six-stroke rolls. So let's try that. Let's play one measure starting with the right, one measure starting with the left. One, two, ready, go. And left hand, go. Okay, and, and uh, yes, yeah, you can imagine on the cymbals. So many other ways. Once again, it's just limited to your imagination. Very cool, man. Six stroke rolls. Yeah, very useful rudiment. Exactly. Yeah. I use it all the time. I mean, actually, quite often. Yeah, I Just use it a lot in the triplet form. Like, yeah, thinking well, about it in triplets. Well, that's a that's a great point you just brought up, oh. because all these rudiments can be interpreted in different ways. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks, you know, is that that's the wrong way to play it? I get that a lot. Yeah, that's that's the wrong way to play it. This is the right way to play it. Like in in the drum course too. Okay, so and so plays that. There's no right or wrong way to play anything, really. Yeah. Um, it's just a, that's a different interpretation. Yeah. So if I interpret it like it's written as 32nd notes, that's one interpretation. Mm -hmm. Let me do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it, play them over and over, but I'm going to change the interpretation as I play them. Awesome. Okay, let's hear it. I'm going to morph. So we can hear all the varieties. Into your favorite six tablets. Nice. Okay? Nice. So I'll start out as 30 second notes and morph into six tuplets. About this tempo so you can hear it. Two, ready, and. That was smooth, man. That was smooth. Smooth as butter. Smooth as butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's so all those and everything in between. This just a different interpretation. Very cool. So practice those rudiments. Practice different ways to play them, different styles. You know, can, can you think of, for example, in what style of music this would be appropriate? Oh, so many styles. Yeah, but uh, what? So as opposed to this. Yeah, I know what you mean. You see? Yeah, different, different feel, different vibe. Yeah, funk a little bit for that. You know, the, it's so many different. I guess you can say uh, grooves, fills. I guess you can use that right. a lot of them with fills. Sure, with exactly. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do some of that in a minute. Cool. But that's just another concept to keep in mind. You know, I, I can play this rudiment or that rudiment or this pattern. It doesn't have to be rudiments. Just whatever. Mm -hmm. It it you know f to fit the style. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the sticking stickings can help. I mean, stickings can definitely help a lot. Uh, we're going to talk about Swiss triplets in a minute, but um, while I'm thinking about it, you mind if I... Do what you got to do, yeah. So a good friend of mine down in New Orleans, Johnny V, I don't know if he's watching, Johnny Vidakovich, he showed me this sticking for a second line, and it just fits really well, but it's not, you know, a second line. But there's a sticking that works a lot better. For that pattern, so things like that. I mean, we could think of many, many examples. That one just came to mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, that's that's why we work on these rudiments to get different articulations and different sounds. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. Flams. Moving on. Number Flams. Three. So speaking of different articulations and different sounds, we were talking about this earlier. Flam taps and inverted flam taps. As we look at the page again, as you look at the the notes. It's exactly the same notation from measure to measure. What's different is the sticking underneath, okay? So flam taps, there's a flam and a tap. And this is a bounce rudiment. This is a rebound stroke that we use. We bounce the stick to play this rudiment, and it sounds as such. It's very relaxed, very 
very easy to play if you do it right. Mm -hmm. All right. The next measure is inverted flam taps. And this is a little more difficult to play, right? but it's the same notation. However, it sounds completely different. Mm -hmm. So check it out. These are inverted flam taps. Ready? Okay, so, mm -hmm. so real quick, I'm just going to play that exercise, and you can hear the difference from measure to measure. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Yeah, big difference. Right? So, so what? Yeah, how do you apply that musically? How do you, how do you apply that musically? Well, we apply this... Um, well, obviously, in rudimental drumming, there's lots of rudiments where we're going to use this motion. So if we break this down, we're going to break it down. We've got to break it down so we can understand it. And then we've got to slow it down and practice it. So eventually... You can throw it down. That's right. You got it. Got it. Okay. So we're going to break it down. If you're playing inverted flam taps and you put, say, one stick on your leg... That's the pattern you're playing playing two ghost notes, and then a quick whip, or a molar stroke, right? Or a common sense stroke. I love that. I'm gonna use that from now on. Common sense, <laughs> common, sense. common sense. Especially as you get older, you gotta cheat a little bit. Yeah. Left hand. Okay, and you gotta work on that stroke and you gotta get it down. And then first of all, play it on a pad and really work on getting that stroke down and get the clarity of the taps and the accent and get as much contrast between the two as possible. Mm -hmm. That's a good word, by the way, contrast. We wanna get as much contrast between accents and taps as possible. Uh, so if I were to play flam taps, where would you use that? Say, let's take this groove. That's the pattern you're playing on flam taps. Check it out. Flam taps, if I leave right hand on the, right on the, on the hats and left hand on the snare. Hmm. All right, and here's a soca. So it's a great exercise for a soca. No doubt, yeah. Which is soul calypso. Yeah. All right, inverted flam taps. I have so many people that have a hard time playing ghost notes on hi-hat followed by an accent. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to practice them. This is your inverted flam tax, say. Where that comes in very handy, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Now, once again, we're not, we're not you're not gonna force inverted flam taps on the drum set. I don't even know how that sounds. That sounds okay. It didn't I mean, actually pretty... sound too bad, no. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's pretty good. Might have something there, you yeah. know? <laughs> but, you know, everybody says applying the rudiments to drum set. It's not always applying the rudiment itself. It's a, a, a version of the rudiment, or the te most importantly, the technique used to learn the rudiments applying that to the kit and any other instrument. That's the lesson, that's the lesson. And you gotta keep that in mind when you're practicing your rudiments, that you're gonna be using them to, to make music, to yeah. build your musical arsenal, if you will. Well, the inverted flam tap is one of my least favorite rudiments, and what you just showed me there, and you showed me this right before the lesson too, I was blown away with, I use that pattern all the time, and I don't practice my inverted flam taps enough, but by practicing those, I would be better at that pattern of the, on the hi-hats, you know? Exactly. Little things like that you don't think about when you're looking at rudiments, you're thinking the technical, or thinking that this is just something I gotta practice because I'm told to practice mm -hmm. it. I learn your 40 rudiments, right? But there's so many re reasons why you should, right? Yeah. Very cool. Exactly. Yeah. Let's move on to number four, Rad McHugh's and Paradiddles. Rad McHugh's and Paradiddles. Well, actually, and look at these two rhythms. They look completely different, right? But they're really the same thing. If you, I mean, if you slur the, the Rad McHugh. And oh, okay. once again, yeah. if we're talking about interpretation, and, and, and someone's going to say, this is how you, well, actually, the Rad McHugh starts on the upbeat. A Rad McHugh is 
it, as it sounds, onomatopoeia, it's an onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia, mm. yeah. Word. Right. Rada McHugh, Rada McHugh. So you go. Well, we're going to start with the accent on downbeat. Okay. Okay, just for the sake of this exercise. Just so you know. Things like that, you know. You just, yeah. The, the more you know, the more you know. Don't ever stop yourself from learning. Don't ever say, ah, who needs that? Who needs that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's just an excuse to be lazy mm -hmm. and not learn something, mm -hmm. all right? The more you know, the more vocabulary you have. And, the, and if the more vocabulary you have, the more you can say, all right? So check it out. Word Do some, dig, dig deep. Do some research. All right, so the Rademacue, I could play it like this. Or I could play it like this. Really? And then anything in between. Mm -hmm. Shall we do the morph again? Do the morph one more time. Do the That's morph. so cool, yeah. We're going to go from the tight, you know, uh, Rademacue, which is maybe what you need, to the super sloppy... Uh, you know, funky yeah. six tuplet Rad McHugh. Yeah. All right? So we'll go with the morph again. Stretching it out. Yeah. Things, yeah. That one wasn't quite as smooth, but you know. You <laughs> get the idea. You get the idea, yeah. Get the idea. Okay, so I'm going to play this uh, this exercise, uh, uh, an aperadiddle diddle, which is basically um, a slurred, what we call slurred if you open them up, Rademacue and aperadiddle diddle are rhythmically the same thing. Right? Mm -hmm. But you put them on different surfaces and they're not the same thing anymore. That's right? So. You put the accents on the symbols and move it around a little bit. But that's another way of in just interpreting the different stickings. You use the stickings you, you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, and actually, speaking of Radimacues and Steve Gadd earlier, boy, he, yeah. he used the he, snot out of Radimacues. He can move those around yeah. the kit so yeah. nicely, yeah. So, cool. uh, that's, that's another great uh, difference in interpretation or different articulations you can get with different stickings. Yeah. Awesome, okay. man. Let's move to number five. Number five. So, uh, now, where are we going now? Six. Oh. Nine ten stroke rolls. Yes. Okay. Now this is this exercise is from my book, the drummer's uh, uh, rudimental remedies. I'm sorry, not that one. The other one. Yeah. There we go. Because that one has the, the has play along tracks. Nine hundred fifty one play along tracks. Seriously? Yeah. Oh. Because every exercise has a track, and it's set, and each one is set into seven different tempos. Jeez. From tempo del Lerno to ludicrous speed. Tempo to Lerno to ludicrous speed. Man. Little, little space balls. <laughs> I love it. So um, this exercise, we're just working on our rolls. And really, the clarity of rolls, I think too often, whether it be in a drum line or on a drum set, the one thing people forget about is the little stuff. Mm -hmm. And you say, don't sweat the little stuff. Actually, you need to sweat the little stuff. Yeah. Okay? Because if the little stuff is clean, then all the accents and stuff are going to be there. However, if all the accents in, are there, it doesn't mean the little stuff's going to be there. Mm -hmm. So to work on, work on your rolls, you know what we're going to do? We're going to switch implements here. So I'm really going to work on my rolls. I'm going to make it hard on myself. Okay, by so using brushes? Using brushes. Practice, practicing rolls on a soft surface or with brushes. And it's like putting, putting leg weights, running with leg weights on and then taking them off when you go to sticks. All yeah. of a sudden you can fly. Yeah. All right, so this is a great exercise. So we're going to do this one. This is with a track. And I forget, I think this is at tempo two. There's seven of these tempos. We're going to do this at tempo, yeah, we're going to do this at tempo two and then we'll do it again with sticks at tempo three. So this is just nine stroke rolls, six stroke rolls, and then ten stroke rolls. 
And um, you guys can follow along on the PDF. It's also on screen there. And let me know when you're ready there, Taylor, with the track. Tell you what I'm going to do, too. Uh, uh, I'll first play it just on the snare drum. I'm going to keep downbeats with the hi-hat. But after a while, I'm going to add the bass drum on the accents. One, two, three, and... Very cool. So, yeah, we got thunder. Yeah, we got some got thunder some here thunder. in, in we are Canada in. up here. Huh. Um, you want to get the other track loaded up there, Taylor? We'll do it with sticks a little bit faster. We'll do it a little faster. We'll do it with sticks. We'll do the same thing first on the snare drum, the beatboxing in there. I, I got I to give a, a shout out to my son. Can I do that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah Drew, it's his birthday today. Dude, happy birthday, so, man. That's my buddy. What's um, your son's name? Drew. 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 He's actually Andrew John. I'm John Andrew, but. Anyway, the, he's part of this, the Woody Minnell drumming. He's on the website as well. Yes, yeah. he's kind of okay, very cool. Me out Happy birthday, that. Drew, and uh, make sure you guys all go check out WoodyMentalDrumming.com to see but some videos of him. I thought of that because I was doing the beatboxing on this thing, and, and he walked in on me. He goes, What are you doing? <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> he was a little embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> Dad shouldn't do that. Right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when, when are you ready there with the track there, Taylor? I'm not just uh, All right. that thunder again, man. Yeah. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> cool, cool. 
So, so we should move on because move, we are, yeah. we're running low on time. Okay, but, let's uh, move it. Let's move it. We'll definitely go over if we have to because we're not stopping until we're done all this stuff. This is this is gold. Okay. Love it. So number six. We're talking about six. Sex tuplets, six, six stroke rolls. So once again, as you said, your favorite. My favorite. Your favorite way to play six stroke rolls as sex tuplets. And this is, so this, this is an example in the book of how to play six tuplets with hip hop music. Okay. Okay, so actually the track in the book is on, they, you play it on the hi-hat. Now it's, we got only two measures there. Are we gonna flip it as we yeah, go? Yeah, there's, there's, there's two tight to fit all in one, yeah, but we'll so flip we're gonna, it as we so go. We're gonna flip Follow it. along okay. on the PDF, guys. All good. right, so we're gonna play this at tempo two, and then again at tempo four. And let's, um, I'm not sure how we're gonna do it, actually. Let's improvise. All right. Let's start, let's start on the snare drum. Sounds and good. And then we can uh, try it on the hi-hat. We could do it like this. We could do it with the accents on the on the toms, on the cymbals, all different sorts of ways to play this. So and and this is just an example, you know, this is just one exercise. Now what you do with it, you can take these six tuplets and this whole idea and, and do your own thing. Yeah. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Absolutely. <laughs> so it gives you an idea, like you say, if you guys are trying to figure out how to apply your rudiments. I mean, you did how many different variations there with the six stroke roll and a six tuplet kind of feel over a hip hop track? Over a hip hop track. Yeah. So that, then that would be the way you would interpret six stroke rolls in hip hop is to really slur them, you know, make yeah. it funky. Well, let's try it at the faster tempo. Faster tempo, I gotta remember what I did. Tempo so. four, is it? This one? This, which one was your favorite out of all those variations? Ooh, I, I like the one where you went on the toms, but I think the hi-hat one was my favorite. The yeah. one where you just sat in there on that pocket. That was, really that, was cool. that was my favorite too. I could just do that one over and over. No doubt, no doubt. But uh, we'll do a little variety just for variety's sake. All right, well here comes okay. the next tempo. This is tempo four, by the way. Yes. Out of seven. Nicely done, though, man. Nicely a little done. faster. Yeah. 
Very cool. So that's another example. Um, we've got one more here, number seven, if you want to move on to that one. Swiss Army triplets. This is, this is actually um, another way I wanted to show uh, on how sticking can change the interpretation. I mean, completely. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the part of the etude from the uh, lesson 22 in the Rudimental Remedies book. There's an etude. So in that book, there's several, each section is on a different rudiment or technique, and it has several exercises, and then an etude at the end that culminates all the exercises, puts it all together. Mm -hmm. And they all have tracks. This is an excerpt of that etude. But it's Swiss Army triplets, flam taps, and flam mills. Each of these each of these rudiments, really, if you could play flam taps. So I play one flam tap, which is right, right, with a flam on the beginning. A Swiss triplet just adds a note. It's a flam tap with an extra note. So I play right, right, and then another left. Okay. Either, either hand. Yep. A, a, a um, single flam mill is a Swiss triplet with an extra note. So we have. Got it. So flam taps alternate, Swiss, triplet, Swiss army triplets do not, unless you force them to. And then flam mills alternate naturally. So that's all we have in here, those three rudiments. And I strung them together to play this, to play this beat. That's four measures long, so we're gonna switch it after two, right? So good. So it goes like this, with as written, with the first sticking. One, two, or check it, check it, check it. One, two, ready, and. That's with the, that's with the first sticking. Now if I play it again, I'm gonna play it with controlled strokes. So it'll sound completely different. Okay. But I'm gonna play it as the, the first measure is gonna be flam accents and inverted flam taps. Okay. So the sticking is right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And then flam paradiddles instead of, Swiss, instead of single flam mills. All right, so wherever we have flam mills, we play a flam paradiddle. Wherever you have Swiss triplets, you have uh, Flam accent, and wherever you had an inverted flam tap, I made a flam tap, you play an inverted flam tap. That's a lot to digest Ooh, yeah. in just a little bit, but I just came up with this just to show the way the interpretation can change by the sticking. So I'll play it again with those rudiments. Let me tell you what, I'm gonna do them back to back so you can hear the difference. Okay. Let me good. play it the first way first, and then, and then I'll go right into the second one. Two, ready. Oh, I'm losing my earpiece. Hang on. One, two, ready. Very quite, cool. Quite different, right? Very different, yeah. And that's just on one drum. Yeah. So imagine if you change surfaces how different that would sound. No doubt. But that's just the, the whole gist of this, you know, lesson, is that using the rudiments and using them in the way you need them, or the techniques to create music. Mm -hmm. That's how we came up with play music, not rudiments. I love that. I love that. And for everyone watching here, I mean, there's just a ton of great information that you just shared with us, John. Um, so if you guys have to, make sure you watch it again, especially that last little bit there. There was a ton of stuff in there. Um, but again, too, I love the couple points that you said about the real rudiments being the motions, the strokes, you know, and, and what really got me when you were talking about that inverted flam tap and how you can easily apply the same motion that you might not realize you're doing in a rudiment, but something that you use quite often in your day-to-day -day drumming. And you might say, how come I'm so bad at that? But if you practice your rudiments up, it allows you to be able to play those things a lot smoother. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, yeah. Love it. Anything else to add? But I, you, I want you to play this full etude out for the end. You have a track for that as well. Yeah. Um, but anything else to add before we just get into a couple questions and wrap up? Um, well, should we do the questions first or you want to... Yeah, we'll do up? the questions first. Okay. Yeah. Uh, me... Anything else to add? What, what, 
Oh, we got all day? We got. I wish oh, we had all day. Got, I'll tell you what, uh, for those who are watching, though, we are going to do a, a Q&A slash interview with, with John tomorrow live for Edge members. So any rudimental questions or technique questions, this is the guy to ask. So uh, for Edge members only, we're also doing, like I said, that core drumming uh, course as well. Uh, but there's a couple questions that have been submitted here. We won't be able to get to them all, but I've got a few for you, if that's okay. Be, be, be real quick, I was just thinking, i got all these sticks here. Yes. Um, you know, you use the right stick for the right music. Of course, I'm not going to use these sticks on a drum set. Those are your marching sticks. These are my marching sticks. And these yeah. are the John Wooten signature stick, which you can only get at WootyMiddleDrumming.com. There you go. Um, but on that big drum we're going to use tomorrow, I'm going to use these sticks. Cool. And so I got a bit, I got to practice with these. I practice with these. It's a 5A, Vic Firth 5A. And then also with, with, with generals or a concert stick, and as we saw with brushes. Because I do all those things. I play in an orchestra. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I play drum set. Mm -hmm. I play with a, on a rope tension drum. Yeah. 17 by 17 inch snare drum. And these pea shooters ain't gonna get it on that drum. No. I gotta have these, yeah. okay? So I gotta practice with all these implements. I gotta practice with these. When I play brushes, I wanna have the dexterity I have with sticks. And uh, I gotta practice all these different styles and with all these different impl implements and with different grips. People are, well, what about match grip? Yes, practice match grip. Which one's better? Yes, practice, practice both. There's, you know, which, totally. one, yeah. which grip is better? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's my answer. <laughs> so good. That's my answer. That's my answer. Dude. Whichever one you need, whichever <laughs> one you like, That's whichever one, one works best for you. All right, that's the bury, better one. Bury that argument once and for all. Right? Exactly. Cool. Okay. Uh, here's a question from Pat Petrillo. Oh my God, Pat! <laughs> he says, "He says, hey, great to hear you, brother." <laughs> he says, yes. "Tell us more about your drum corps experience and how the rudiments helped your overall as a percussionist." Well, um, Pat and I go way back. We competed against each other, not just with chord, but as, as individuals. And he always he always kicked my butt, but. Um, He's a little older than me. He's my big brother. There you go. So, um, in, in drum corps, so I marched with the Phantom Regiment Drum Bugle Corps for several years, and then I went on to teach and write for that group. And of course, Pat marched with the Bridgman, the famed Bridgman uh, drum line. Yeah. And um, of course, at that time, and speaking of different styles, at that time, our two drum lines had different, completely different styles. Mm -hmm. And they played mostly pop music, funk music, so they played their rudiments differently. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, they play them differently. I said, yeah, well, this other people, play, they play them wrong. I said, wrong? They sound great. Mm -hmm. I said, we would play them one way, and people say, oh, they don't play them the right. I said, this, we played them for classical music. They were playing pop music. We were playing classical music in different interpretation. So that's one of the first lessons I've had with, with how to interpret rudiments differently. And then how they help me with, they help me with absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it all the time. When I'm playing congas, you know, when you're playing a tumbao on congas, You see a molar stroke there? Yeah. You know, and then ghost notes? I mean, that's maybe far-reaching, but it's just the dexterity you use and the, and the clarity you get from practicing rudimental drumming. It's going to show up on your drums. So actually, the best examples I can, I can, I can give you is li listen to David Garibaldi. Listen to Vinny Caliuta. Listen to Jason Sutter. And, and uh, all these, you know, when you hear somebody that says, oh man, it just sounds so clean, so good. Dave Weckl, you know, mm -hmm. these guys. Uh, Steve Gadd, Steve Gadd marched drum corps. Yeah. Yeah, so um, they got their rudiments down and they got that stuff down. That's why it sounds the way it does. Pat Petrillo, my man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, David Garibaldi. Got it down, they yeah. got it down, so yeah. Very cool. Uh, we have a couple other questions here, but there are a lot of them are from Edge members. So what we'll do is we'll save those for tomorrow because we are running really low on time, John. Okay. Um, but I did want to get Pat's question in because I know you guys <laughs> go way back. It's funny, we have all the pictures of our guests that have come out here, and as soon as he saw a picture of, of, of Pat, he's like, I got to take a picture of this guy. Hey, you got Jim Riley up there, Dave Garibaldi. Yeah. I'm sure it's Jason Sutter soon, right? Now. And soon to be John Wooten. Yeah. How about yeah. that? The wall of fame, man. That? Yeah. Thank you so much. Man. Thank this you. This has been a blast. I'm glad. Yeah, and what a place. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yeah. Incredible. 15 years in the, in, in the making, but uh, we finally got a studio that, that's good enough to bring John Wooten out to. <laughs>
But I really do appreciate all the stuff that uh, you brought to the table here. Uh, you're always welcome here. I know uh, a couple people in the chat saying you should get him out to do a steel pan lesson. Uh, so hey, that's that's a possibility, and I really want to talk about that more. We could do that. Yeah, but again, for all those watching, thanks for tuning in. Uh, again, make sure you download the PDF, follow along. For those who are SWAT watching us on YouTube, come on and join Drumio Edge. We do this stuff all the time, and every time we bring in a guest, every single guest that you've seen in our YouTube channel, we have exclusive course content that's separate to this inside of Edge. So I hope you guys sign up for that. And we're also, gonna, we're going to break it down, slow it down tomorrow, and we'll be throwing it down. Absolutely, seriously. It's going to be good. Yeah. I'm pumped. We don't have anything on drum core uh, specifically on Drumio yet. So this is going to be from the master himself. And uh, again, make sure you go and check out um, woodhimentaldrumming.com. Uh, yeah, we're and doing it there too. So, doing it yeah. there too. They got their own thing. You and your son, Drew, uh, yeah. which is great. Again, happy birthday, Drew. And uh, huge thanks for all the sponsors. Again, Pearl, Remo, uh, Sabian, Vic Firth. Uh, yeah, so let's play us out with... Uh, that etude. Yeah, we're gonna do. I'm just gonna play it on on the snare drum. This is the etude from Lesson 22, which we kind of covered. Swiss Army triplets. It's got flam taps, uh, single flam mills in there, and we're gonna do a little back sticking at the end. Very cool. All right. Well, I'm so. gonna leave so I can watch it through there because I've been sitting right here. I want to hear it through the control room. Um, but take it away, John. Again, Man. thank you so much. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. And I'll see you guys all later. <laughs>